He's been the one that's been in contact with me the longest when the, the church was recruiting me to come here. OC was the one that had called and started the conversation with that. And so if you would, give a warm new song welcome to Rutho Ocilian Similian. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Woo. Hey, Pastor, the check's in the mail. Praise God. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, I love the fire. Pumped up. Man, that's what I'm talking about. You know, God is good. And all the time. It says nothing that takes anything away from how good God is. I don't care what kind of day you're having, guess what? God is still good. Amen. You can't take that goodness away from him because that's just his nature. That's who he is. And so when we tap into his goodness, that's when things start turning around for us. So whatever you're going through right now, I want you to focus in on God's word. Focus in on the message today. Um, God has been pouring um, ideas after ideas. And so I'm, I'm praying that we can take what we hear today and really apply it in our life. And so today, I want to talk to you about how we jump to the next level. How do we jump to the next level in our living? Because wherever we are right now, the question is, how do we jump to that next level? Yeah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are, who you allow us to be in you. And I just pray right now that you would be with us in mind and spirit, Father Lord. Any distraction that would keep us away from hearing your word to us in our hearts, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus, Father. I pray for focusness and that our minds will be tuned to what you're doing in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want you to listen to the sound and tell me what comes to your mind. Ready? Here we go. That should give it away. What is it? Yeah, Pac-Man, baby. Yo, I used to love playing this game right here. Because the rules were simple. You eat all the white dots and you avoid the four ghosts as far as possible, right? But for some reason, that red ghost called Blinky, that's him right there. He's like the smartest one of them all. And he knew where to position himself to corner you. The other ones were kind of just like floating around, but he was the brains that kind of draw every, uh, all the other ghosts to where you were. But what I realized is that each level would basically get faster and faster and faster, and I had to depend on the skills that I learned in the previous level and the confidence that I gained in order to be successful at the level I was at. And one awesome thing about this game, besides eating the white dots and avoiding the other ghosts, is that power pellet. <laughs> because when you eat that power pellet, you have the ability to defeat those ghosts. If they come in your way, matter of fact, they're running away from you. And you chase them down, and you gobble them up, and you show them what power is, right? But I can't hate, uh, uh, help but to correlate this game with how life is sometimes with us. See, whatever our current level is, God is calling us to that next level. God has more for us. He's always, he always seeks to do more with us and through us. He doesn't want us to be stagnant or complacent. We are either growing or we're regressing. We're either growing or we're regressing. And God wants to grow us like you would never, ever believe. He's in the growing business. <laughs> he wants to take us to the next level, and we cannot do this without his word. So our, my first point is the next level, in order for us to get there, we need his word. And when times gets tough and we feel trapped, guess what? We need a power pellet. See, God has given us his word, which is the power pellet, 
And he has given us his promises, and when we learn to use them, we can defeat the enemy on whatever level we're on in the times of trouble. And when we do that, it propels us to living on another level because we've gained victory on the level where we were. Amen? So here's the cool thing, though. God's word is awesome. It's powerful. I mean, we open it up. We read it. We digest it. We chew it up. We meditate on it, right? And that's all cool and all of that. But here's the thing. If we are going to be living on the next level in our faith and in life, we need to move beyond just knowing God's word and start living God's word. Amen? Amen. See, listen to what James 1, uh, 22 to 25 says. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. That's a call to action. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone that looks in the mirror and immediately after looking himself goes away and forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. That's important to understand because we're moving from knowing and understanding, looking at it, okay, I know God's word says this, and I know, into action and actually living it and seeing the power of God. See, when you eat the power pellet, that's one thing. But now you got the power to chase and run wherever you want to. At that point, you're un, really undefeatable, <laughs> right? Anything bumps in your way is going to basically get eaten up. I want to show you an illustration when we talk about the word, all right, and when I have this cup here that represents us. Do you drink some of this? <laughs> Always drinking my water. Yes, it's thirsty, huh? <laughs> and this water represents God's word. And so what happens every day, we get filled up. We're seeking for God's word in our lives. We should be thirsty and as, with, as we thirst, we get filled. And so the cool thing about this, though, is that when we're filled with God's word, we walk around and things like that. I want you to tell me what happens if this cup of water gets bumped. What happens to it? Spills it's what? Spills water, right? Water comes out of it. But here's the, here's the number one question. Why did the water spill? Because what? Okay, there's no lid. It was full. Okay, it got bumped, right? Right? It's overflowing. But here's the cool thing. The reason it spilled water is because there was water inside of it. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Because whatever's in this cup, when you bump it, that's what's going to come out. So the reason it spilled water is because there's water inside of it. So the same with this illustration that I've, I've just uh, said to you is that when we get bumped in life, what comes out? You should be so saturated and filled with God's word that when life bumps you in the wrong way, God's word is what comes out. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Woo. Here's another scripture here, Psalms 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. See, God's word is a lamp. Think of it like this. It's a resource. It's a tool. A lamp is a, is a tool. It's a device. When I put a bulb in it, yeah, and I flick the switch, something happens. What happens? Light comes out, right? But that lamp is the, is the tool, the resource. And out of it comes light which can be in the form of wisdom, understanding, clarification, confirmation, and insight. See, this light helps us to see clearly in the direction that our feet is taking us. See, our feet is the part of our body that we stand with, and also it's the one that we take a step with. And this brings me to my next point, because in order for us to live in the next level, we need to step a lot of people are afraid to step. Yes. 
or they're concerned about stepping. But I'm here to tell you there's power in stepping. And speaking of steps, boy, let me tell you, my family and I, we know about steps. A couple of years ago, we're about to see here, we took a trip and enjoyed the outdoors of the Amicalola Falls, which is the highest waterfall here in Georgia. There it is. All right. Awesome. So take a look at some of these pictures. It was an, an awesome experience uh, for all of us. And we had to get to the top of the falls. Guess what? We had to climb 600 <laughs> steps. And let me tell you, when we got to going, there were some knees shaking. <laughs> but what we did is we kept reminding ourselves and each other that all we need to do was take the next step. When our knees and our legs started to shake, we just kept reminding, it's okay, you'll be all right. Let's just take the next step. Let's keep on going, one step at a time. See, stairs are made up of steps, and steps are designed to bring us to the next level or flight. We can't ignore the steps if we want to get to the next level. See, no one likes taking steps, especially when it takes time and effort. But the reward, trust me, is worth it. See, what is the next step you feel God is calling you? There's a next step in your life right now that God is pointing his finger to and saying, we need to take this step. Is it volunteering maybe for a ministry here at New Song Church? Hint, hint. Or maybe it's waking up 30 minutes earlier so that you can spend some more quality time with God. So what's the steps as a husband or as a wife that God is calling you to be a better husband or a better wife? What's the steps that God is calling you to be a better son, a better daughter? Well, maybe it's calling your parents a little bit more or visiting them a little bit more, more than once a month. Mm, right? So parents, well, maybe for you, it's spending more family time with your kids. See, whatever your step is that God is called, you know what that step is. Because God is like, come on, we need to take that step. Some of us are like, nah, I'm not ready for it. Okay, you stay right where you are. And when you're ready, we're going to step, but I'm going to step with you. God is calling us to step. And those that understand the roles of the step, they embrace it and they welcome the journey. Because in that stepping is where you reach that next level. Yeah. Instead of looking for an escalator uh -huh. or an elevator to get to that next level yeah. to take the easy way out, we need to look for those stairs. Yeah. Because in the stepping is where we find our journey to that next level. Those that look for an express way of getting ahead will miss so many details and benefits and will be disappointed that they are stuck month after month after month after year after year after year. <laughs> I said that just for you, buddy. <laughs> in the same spot, not moving forward, staying in right there. They will probably never get where they need to get to unless they slow down and take those stairs. In Psalms 37, verse 23, it says this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Let's break this down. You see, we need to step because it is in the stepping, it's in that action that we find and we, we become more mature, we become more ready, and we become more focused in getting to the next level of living. If we are going to be next level people, if we're going to be next level Christian, if we're going to be next level new songers, we need to take one step at a time. See, God is preparing us for the next level of blessing. But we have to step in what he ordered. See, when we go to a restaurant, right, somebody comes, can I have your order? And you give an order and they write it down. If they come back with something you didn't order, you better believe you're going to make a fit. Well, I ain't order that, right? When God orders something, guess what? It's not coming back to him void. Right. Now, you may stray away from it, but God's like, we're not moving forward until we finish this order I made for you. Yeah. See, the thing is, God 
orders our steps. Yes. He orders those steps. Yes. So the steps that you're taking is to fulfill a greater purpose that you don't see yet. Yes. But the thing is, we need to trust him. See, God encourages us along the way. Yes. So let's take a look at these steps right here. Each step that we take, right, God is encourages us along the way. Come on, we can do it. Come on, breathe. I know you're tired, but we can do this. Let's get to that next step. You're more than a conqueror because, listen, I live in you. We can do this. Don't stop right here. We're not there yet. Yeah. God is encouraging us along the way. And that should bring encouragement to us, knowing that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Each step that we take, God is right there closer than your next breath. Amen? So this next point that I'm going to bring up, so, you know, we talked about, hey, God's word. And we talk about um, the steps that we need to take. But this next point here, I have to give props uh, to Ms. Virginia and Ms. Diana. And the reason I'm giving them props is because they were talking to my wife, you know, about some things, uh, some, some, some great adventures in our new life of getting a new business. And they were just talking to and they were like, what is this thing called stretch zone? Is this, this like spiritual thing? And they just kept, that's what kept pouring there. And she came and she told me about it. And I was like, wow, we're looking at each other's fireworks was just going off in her head. And I looked at her. I was like, okay, I know what time it is. We need to incorporate this because God was just speaking in so many different ways. So the next level that we need to, to understand is that if we're going to get to the next level, we have to be stretched. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And what I want to do is I want to bring up somebody that specializes in stretching. That's what he does for a living. He, he stretches. He stretches people and he gets other people to do the same thing. And so I want to call up to the altar or podium. All right. This expert stretcher. And I'll let him give his name. Yeah, you can give it up for him. I wouldn't say expert now. <laughs> Pretty good at it. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so, um, question, tell, tell everyone who you are and what you do. Well, hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, <laughs> my name is Tad Thompson. I am the regional director for Stretch Zone in Atlanta. Um, basically, uh, what we do is that we provide a service called practitioner-assisted stretching. And... Um, to put it in a, a more simpler term, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys know those old Cadillac Deville's, right? As soon as you turn on the car, the antenna goes up one notch at a time, right? Basically, what we do is we reset the muscle, ne the muscle reflex neurologically um, in that same type of term. So we have it, it goes up one notch at a time. We get to a point where it gets all the way fully extended so the muscle feels the need not to snap back, but it's comfortable enough for you to be able to do what you want to do. All right. Well, awesome. And so... In more simply ter uh, simple terms, right, for those that may not un understand all the terminology, uh, when it comes to stretching, what, what's one thing or a couple of things that people need to know that it does for the muscles, for the body, and things like that? Well, stretching, stretching does help improve uh, your, your natural range of motion. Um, mm -hmm. Biggest thing about it is that once you do get consistently stretched, it helps you to help improve your flexibility. Uh, it also allows you to, it allows the muscle to feel strong enough to therefore you can go ahead and do what you want to do um, as far as, you know, like, you know, getting back to normal activities like working out, playing golf, playing tennis, different things like that. Uh, so it allows you to actually get through the pain first uh, to be able to get to what you want to do at the end of the day. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I'm not going to take up uh, more of your time, but I want to expound on what Tad Thomas, Th Thompson said. Thank you, brother. <laughs> See, there's something in stretching that happens, right? So he talked about the people that do the stretching. They're called practitioner. Well, guess what? God is our practitioner, yeah. <laughs> and he knows how much we can bear, and he loves us where we are. Don't get me wrong, but he cares and loves us too much to leave us where we are. And so what he does is that he wants to stretch us to new heights and to new limits. He wants to take us from where we are and bring us to where he needs us to be, yeah. to be effective. See, it's, it's time to, to pass the mediocre of where you are and the stagnant uh, where you are right now. He wants to take you 
from what you've learned and bring you to the new heights. He does it by stretching us. He does it by taking us past what we think or believe um, is our limit. And as explained earlier, we gain so much by being stretched. So here's two points that I want to give you from that. See, God stretches us so we can be more flexible. See, a lot of us sometimes are not flexible enough, and as soon as we get bumped the wrong way, we revert back to our old selves sometimes, right? But God is calling us for flexibility. See, because the more flexible we are, the more God can use us. Flexibility allows us to go beyond what we can ever imagine. Things or people that used to bother us don't bother us anymore. That's how you know you're becoming more and more flexible. Many of us have grown up listening and hearing these words. You will never amount to anything. Oh, you can't do that. Well, whatever you do is going to fail anyway. But I'm here to tell you that God needs us to trust him in what he does and in his promises so that he can work in us and through us so that we can go beyond our beliefs. Every day we allow God to stretch us, that consistency, all right, of allowing him to stretch us, we then pass our limits and we become more and more like Jesus. The second point about being stretched is that stretching, when God stretches us, we become stronger. The coolest thing about the muscle, like we heard earlier, is when it gets stretched and it hurts, it hurts, and sometimes we're sore, But guess what? That stretch allowed us to get stronger. When God stretches us, he does it so we can become stronger in the areas which we are weak. That that was a lot right there. So the area that you are weak in, like I said before, God loves you too much to leave you where you are. And so he stretches that area of tightness of unflexibility in that area so that way it can become more flexible and so that it can become stronger in that area. The Bible tells us that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So don't get it twisted. Our strength comes from him. It comes from him. And apart from him, we can do nothing. Things that, that used to make us fall into wrong living don't phase us anymore because we are stronger than before. When we surrender to Christ as Savior and Lord, because people get the Savior part down pat. Oh, yeah, Jesus is my Savior. What about the Lord part? Because he needs to be Lord of your life. And when he does become Lord of your life, we become stronger because now he's running things and not us. Trust me, it's a stretch, but it's worth it. Amen? This brings us to the next point. But what I want to do is I want to bring up my better self, all right? I want to bring my better self because I got to give you the best, all right? I was just a filler. (laughs) But the truth is, this better half of me I've known for over 20 years. I can't do what I do without her. And so I want to take the time to make sure I introduce her correctly. She is the love of my life. My one bride for life. She is the mother of my children, in which I can go home after a long day and find rest. And so help me welcome to the stage my wife, my beautiful bride, Miss Avril Ocillian Similian. Such kind words. <laughs> he said it just like we practiced. <laughs> this morning, I would like to speak briefly with you about two points about the, the role that faith plays as God is moving us to the next level, and especially when we find ourselves in the stretch zone. Esther is one of my the favorite characters of the Bible for me. To me, she represents the epitome of strength, grace, and courage. I truly admire her. You know, sometimes when we read about people in the Bible like Noah and Abraham and 
Jacob and Esther, and the list goes on, we tend to put them on a pedestal. The truth is there were ordinary people who were called by God to do extraordinary things. There were people going about their daily lives who said no to their fears and yes to God. So who was Esther? Just a brief review of her history. She was a young Jewish girl of great beauty who was chosen by King Xerxes out of a multitude of other women vying for the position of queen. He chose Esther. By the way, as I was reading the text, I was like, you know, this is the first ever recorded episode of The Bachelor. <laughs> Someone read Esther and like, you know what, that would be a great reality show. <laughs> Esther was an orphan who was raised by her uncle Mordecai. Mordecai is the one who encouraged her to enter the royal competition, but told her to keep her Jewish heritage a secret, which she did. After Esther became queen, Mordecai would frequently visit her at the gates of the palace to, ch to check on her. And as he was at the gates one day, he heard of an evil plan by an evil man named Haman to annihilate the Jewish people. Now, Esther and Mordecai couldn't speak directly to each other, but they would use servants to communicate back and forth. And this is where we pick up the story in chapter 4, verse 8. And we just, we just want to read this text for you. Mordecai gave the servant a copy of the text of the edict for the annihilation of the Jewish people, which had been published in Susa, to show Esther and explain to her and he told him, the servant, to instruct her to go to the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. The servant went back to Esther and told her what Mordecai said. And she said to him, all the king's people and the people of the royal provinces know that for a man or woman to approach the inner court without being summoned by the king, there is but one law, that they be put to death, unless the king extends his gold scepter to them and spares their lives. And it's been 30 days since I've been summoned. When Mordecai heard her answer, he said back to her, Do not think that because you are in the king's house that you alone of all the Jewish people will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But if you and your father's family would, will perish, and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther replied, she said, okay, go. Gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or a day. I and my attendants will fast as well. When it is done, I will go to the king, even though it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. There was danger lurking at the gates of the kingdom. And Esther was called upon by Mordecai to take action because he knew she had direct access to the king. She had never done this before, and she was aware of the dangers of taking such a bold step. Esther was being called outside of her comfort zone. She had now entered the stretch zone. I would like to speak specifically to the women of the congregation this morning. Men, you can listen too. You're welcome. As women, as wives, as mothers, we are called to be gatekeepers of our home. A gatekeeper is someone who guards an entrance. It's a person who takes charge of and controls who may enter and who may pass through. It's a person who sees, hears, looks, and listens in order to protect something or someone. So just as in the story of Esther, we need to be aware that there is an enemy lurking at our gates. He seeks to seek, to, to steal, kill, and destroy our families, our children, our marriages. So what are we going to do about that? What do we do when our teenager rebels? What do we do when our marriage falls cold and our spouse is cold towards us? What do we do when we get the negative report from the doctor and when everything seems to be coming against us for our destruction? Well, what did Esther do? She said, go, gather all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days. I and my attendants will fast as well. Esther recognized the magnitude of the situation and she called upon her people to fast and pray with her and for her. Women, one of the biggest lies the enemy will feed us is that we can handle our situations alone. And that would bring me, that brings me to the first of my two points, is that there is strength in numbers. When we face difficult situations, we need to call upon our fellow prayer warriors to cover us in prayer. Do not be deceived by lies that say, they won't understand what I'm going through. This is no big deal. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to bother anyone. Those are lies. 
The enemy wants us to struggle in seclusion, but one of the main purposes of the body of Christ is to lift each other up and to hold each other up in prayer. As we reach out to others in faith, other believers, their faith strengthens our faith. 